Hello and welcome to another standard games video. Today I'm revisiting the red white tokens deck that I featured not too long ago on the channel, but we've got some significant upgrades with the Lost Caverns of Ixalan, so it was certainly worth revisiting here. I believe this to be one of the best decks in standard now, with the addition of a Warden of the Inner Sky, a 1 mana 1 2. It has a Flying and Vigilance as long as we have 3 or more counters on it, and we can quickly accumulate those counters by tapping 3 untapped artifacts and or creatures we control. We not only get a plus 1 counter, but we also get to scry one, can only use this as a sorcery. So we can quickly start growing the Warden as early as turn two with turn one Warden. Turn two we can even tap some of the random blood tokens or treasure tokens, such as the one from Epicure. So turn two we could play Epicure and maybe another one drop, and then immediately tap blood token Epicure and the other creature to start growing the Warden. Could also go for a turn two Charming Scoundrel making a treasure token, and then we've got Treasure, Scoundrel and Warden itself to activate. And the same is true for the reinforcements making a 1-1 soldier token, so you can see how quickly we can accumulate stuff to activate our warden. Then a gleeful demolition is also great with warden, as we can target some of our random tokens to make three goblins, and then we can maybe first tap the token we're about to destroy to activate warden, and then after making the goblins we can activate warden once again. And the card selection we get from scrying is actually quite important in this deck, since it sort of functions as a combo deck. We've got our early enablers making lots of tokens, and then we're looking for some of our finishers, such as the recruiter giving our team plus one plus two and haste until end of turn, so that's one way to get in a lot of damage after making tokens. And there's also the new Evangelist, a 2-1 with Battle Cry. So if this attacks, we give our other attacking creatures plus one plus so until end of turn. So that's another nice anthem effect. And when the Evangelist enters or dies, we get to make a 1-1 Flying Bat token. So that's another great way to go wide while pumping the team. And then we also have our Knight Errant, another key card in this deck, as we can cast it with Convoke, which can also happen very early on thanks to our many tokens. And then uh, this can also help us find additional threats, such as Evangelist and Recruiter, or even another Knight Errant if we tapped five creatures to cast it. Then the Regal Bunnycorn helps us go tall, whereas most of our deck is trying to go wide. It's nice to have one large threat so we can hold off other attackers and eventually start attacking with the Bunnycorn as well. This also grows with any tokens we might generate from our Epicure or Scoundrel. And then the Frontliner is here as another cheap artifact that we can destroy with our own demolition to make three goblin tokens, and then we can also unearth it from the graveyard to still get an attack in, and that way we've got 10 enablers for the demolition, which is necessary, between the Frontliner, Epicure, and the treasure tokens from Scoundrel, which can also occasionally make a Wicked Roll token, or maybe if we're empty-handed we can discard and draw to draw a fresh card, can also be quite nice. So we no longer need to play Ral's Reinforcements as a token maker, and that card was a bit of a number with our Knight Errant anyways, since it's not a creature we can find with the ability, and we're much happier with Warden as a one-mana creature that can actually give us some card selection and turn into a real threat that can fly over to close out games. And a quick editor's note here, and a small spoiler for the upcoming expansion, as I was editing the video, they revealed Novice Inspector as a virtual reprint of Thraben Inspector, and this card will fit perfectly into this strategy as well, potentially replacing the frontliner. And then the mana base is where things get a little bit rough, since Red White does not have a fast land in standard, so we do have Battlefield Forge as a pain land, which can also cost us in some of the aggressive matchups. And then as we said, no fast land. We're not a deck that can run Cavern of Souls, since we have a wide range of creature types and we still need red mana for demolition, which is not a creature. So instead we turn to Thram Portal, which is kind of a worse version of Battlefield Forge, and then Mirex can also be a bit awkward if we need to make lots of colored mana, but in the grindier matchups can sometimes make more tokens in the late game, which is helpful. And then we've got some basics here for Mountains, Six Plains. The channel lands offer a tiny bit of interaction, although we don't have any legendaries to discount them. And then Sundown Pass is a necessary evil, since it can sometimes enter the battlefield tapped early on, when we want to curve one drop into two drop, or a deck can sometimes keep two landers, since we've got a relatively low curve, and then if Sundown Pass is one of those two lands, we're going to be disappointed, but we still need the mana fixing, so we'll have to run it. So let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand is missing some token makers, perhaps. So we've got Evangelist on three, so we would curve Epicure, Bunnycorn, hopefully turn three Evangelists, and then turn four Convoke Knight Errants. Yeah, I guess we'll give it a try. I'll save the Mirex in case we need to double one drop next turn and need the colored mana. 
opponent on dinosaurs with Lorekeeper, and Demolition was an excellent draw. So now we could Demolition and then still Convoke Knight Errands. Could also go for Bunnycorn and make that play next turn. Although if we play Bunnycorn with more tokens in play, it can get removed as easily by a red removal. So I'm actually into this idea. And then we don't have a white creature to tap for Convoke, so this is the only way to get Knight Errant out there. Finding Recruiter and Frontliner. So we didn't miss out on another Knight Errant by not going for the full Convoke. And there's a Hammer Skull on turn 2, also quite powerful. So now is a good time to play a Bunnycorn. I guess it could still die to a Chomp now that you have a 6-6 six -six on the battlefield. But um, I guess the alternative is Epicure and Frontliner, which is good, but not exciting. I think we need to get the Chomp out of the way at some point. And then with a land, hopefully drop a Recruiter next turn. Ooh, Fight Rigging, that's scary, on turn 3. So they can live the dream here. And what do they get? Another Hammer Skull, not bad. And do we want to trade here? Not especially, since our bunny corn's only going to get bigger. I guess with Fight Rigging they can also keep growing the Hammer Skull, but not at the same rate. Jumping with a 1-1 one -one was an option, but our 1-1s one are potentially going to present more damage soon. To grow bunny corn as much as possible. And hit for 9. And then hopefully next turn play recruiter. Can take a little bit of a hit. Most dinosaurs don't play burn spells that go face. So I'm not going to play around one. And our opponent actually hit the brakes on attacking. Keeps double hammer skull back because they know about the incoming recruiter. And uh, yeah, that gives us the opportunity to develop our board without needing to necessarily play recruiter and attack all out. If our opponent has a removal spell, they've got two blockers, then five, six, so about 12, 13 damage going through. I guess recruiter is another three. So we're not quite at lethal, but we're getting close. So maybe it is evangelist for now. And then next turn drop Recruiter. And then Evangelist with Battle Cry can also enhance our team. If Bunnycorn attacks now it just trades for one Hammer Skull, so it's not that exciting. Unless we set up a more significant attack. So I think I'm fine just chilling with a Bunnycorn. Could see a removal on Evangelist of course. But then we'll still get a bad token in return. And our point actually destroying the Frontliner with Kogla and Hidaro. Okay. Does that change anything? What if I attacked all out? Opponent could double block bunny corn, but then they take 7, 8, 9. If they block knight errands, then 15 goes through. We have two blockers. If one gets removed, we get a replacement. So I'm not hating the all out attack. Opponent will set up the double block. Falls to 9. And then with the recruiter next turn we could have lethal. And Dracosaur doesn't change much. Just one more blocker. So we can just double check here, but uh, yeah, between Battle Cry and the recruiter trigger we should have more than enough. So we don't even need the battle cry trigger. But I'll take it. Awesome. So yeah, opponent had 
Turn 2 Hammer Skull, turn 3 Fight Rigging, but it still wasn't good enough. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and uh, can't quite play Warden on turn 1. Can play turn 2 alongside Epicure, still activates, so... Seems good enough. Could also start with a bunny corn if we don't think it'll be destroyed instantly. Alright, so against what looks like a domain deck. Could go for bunny corn. And then next turn grow the bunch. There's a chance her opponent's got a virtue of persistence, giving this minus three. And uh, taking it out. So they're still missing one basic clan type for Domain, so no one mana Leyline Binding is important. So Warden, Epicure, Frontliner can activate Warden while growing Bunnycorn. And then next turn maybe get our Knight Errant down. Don't think we need another Frontliner. So not a bad start. It's a race against uh, time, since at 5 mana we can expect Sunfall to reset the board, and that's not a card we can easily beat. Leyline for Bunnycorn, and hopefully that's all their interaction, but nope, it looks like they also are gonna have a Virtue of Persistence here. Yep. Alright, so we're back to the Stone Ages. Demolition was an excellent draw, so we wanna Maybe full Convoke Knight Errants. And then Warden could activate here using the Blood Token, but then we're not full Convoking Knight Errant anymore. Maybe Convoke for 4 is enough. If I, let's say, Demolition here, 3 tokens, then I'll be one short of activating Warden, unless we find another red 1-drop. I guess that's possible. And this way we can find additional copies of Knight Errant, which is pretty important. Just a recruiter, so a bit of a miss. But at least we're back on the board after having two creatures removed. And recruiter still represents a healthy amount of damage next turn. Probably won't be enough to beat a Sunfall, which they can cast next turn. I guess if they don't have any relevant interaction, we do get to 15, and Stomper doesn't really count here. Alright, so I guess Recruiter might be game after all. Planes does represent another Leyline Binding, does that change the equation? Let's see, 6, 12, no, that's still 15 if they exile the Knight Errant. I guess 16 with the frontliner buff. So yeah, let's go for it. Their opponent had a very good draw for the domain deck in this matchup at least. Even better would have been early ramp into a turn 4 sunfall, but uh, they might have had a sunfall in hand and just didn't have time to cast it. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a fine hand. While we're missing some of our better payoffs, Warden still great here, even if we can't quite activate it on turn 2. And next turn can play Evangelists. Activate Warden. And then probably attack with a bunny corn. Yeah, opponent's gonna get lost a bunny corn. At least we get two artifact tokens in return, which are still very good alongside Warden. And I'll take another Evangelist. Hit for two. Yeah, get lost is not very good against our deck. While of course it makes sense to answer bunny corn. We've got so many ways of utilizing the map tokens between Warden and Gleeful Demolition. Right, no Warden anymore is unfortunate, but uh, 
We'll just get the evangelists going. And then hoping for recruiter, knight errants. More bunny corns are welcome. And of course we're hoping to dodge a uh, sunfall next turn. For now we can go exploring. Night Errant will keep, even though if our opponent's got uh, Sunfall, it's going to be a pretty sad Night Errant. So I might just keep an Artifact Token around. Attack all out. Could see Wandering Emperor here, which in a way is not a bad thing, because then Sunfall is less likely. Yep. And they're gonna exile the frontliner actually. Could take it out with Iganjo so it doesn't get exiled, and we deny the life gain. Seven. Yeah, I guess that would be a lethal here. Exaxes. Kinda surprised we got this much damage, but uh, I'll take it. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Our hand is not perfect, missing a Gleeful Demolition perhaps, or a Knight Errant and or Recruiter, but we've got the Evangelists and a decent curve. And then if we top deck any of the aforementioned cards, we've got Artifacts to enable Demolition, plenty of tokens to enable Knight Errant, and then Recruiter's gonna be good too. Up against some form of a red aggro. Okay, Warden's nice too. So I could attack with Epicure, don't really want to trade. Could also go Scoundrel, play Warden with the treasure, and then still activate it. Yeah, I guess that's a way to get the Warden going. And then I could still potentially attack with a 1-1, one, one, but then we would be trading two of our creatures. Another Warden isn't bad. It's not quite one of the payoff cards I mentioned earlier, but if they remove the first Warden, I guess I wouldn't mind a backup. Opponent is red-green, so can expect some pump spells to go on the scamp, which can then sacrifice to deal even more damage. And a Picnic Ruiner also fits in that build. So giant growths are in our future. For now, we've got a couple options. Evangelist being one of them. And then I can activate Warden twice if I tap out, which is a little risky. Is there a chance I die? For opponent goes Monstrous Rage plus Giant Growth on Scamp. This gains Double Strike, maybe a third pump spell. Could certainly be dead. But blocking is also going to be tough. So maybe it's fine. I guess we can start with one of them. Don't need another Epicure. Even though it's something I could play alongside reinforcements next turn. So if I go again, this grows up to a 4-5. And then next turn I can start attacking. A 3-4 just won't block very well in the face of... A giant growth. Alright, now we're talking. Knight Errant. Keep that one. So let's see if we're dead. Three pump spells will certainly do it. And there's a Monstrous Rage for starters. So Runer hits for 10. We're at 7. And they could go after Evangelist here. Okay, at least we get a replacement bat. Okay, so now we've got an interesting decision. Could go for a Reinforcements and Warden. Convoke Knight Errant 
with a full convoke here. And then I could also activate Warden of the Inner Sky that's currently in play, grow it up to a 5-6 attack with it. Since the Haruner has trample, so it's not like jumping with a 1-1 is going to make a huge difference. Sure. Don't seem like they might have a giant growth. Which, if they had it, I think they had lethal last turn. Pump the Picnic Ruiner, that's plus 6, and then Scam just going face would have been 7. So they probably don't have a giant growth, but might be some protection spell. Uh, either way, let's use Knight Errants. And then find another Knight Errant. Bunnycorn's good too. Kind of want to try and find a Recruiter to end the game. But these two will have to do. And then... Yeah, I think it's a little too risky to tap all my creatures. So I'll just hit for four. And then we'll have more toughness back to block the Picnic Ruiner. Which is uh, hopefully enough to survive. Suppose we could tap Blood Token and the smaller creatures, still make this 5 power. But now we've got 3, or I guess 2 extra toughness. And once we drop Bunnycorn, we should be pretty well set up to block. A Blazing Crescendo, so that's 12 damage coming across. Well, at least we can still trade. So this has me taking 3 Trample damage. Down to four. Is that a problem? Probably not. Putin just stuck on two lanes. If they had an extra one, this uh, giant growth could have been very scary. Found a demolition as well. All right. I guess I have to be a little careful with the forge. If I tap it for red mana down to three, we could die to a lightning strike. So maybe we'll avoid doing that. Unless... Uh, it means lethal damage, but for right now, just playing Bunny Corn and convoking a Knight Errant seems good enough. Probably don't need Bunny Corn back on defense. And then this can tap for Colorless. Finding Evangelists and a Frontliner, maybe. And then we'll get in for 4 damage. And then next turn. I imagine we can cross the finish line. And our opponent explodes. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand is far from perfect, but I think keepable. If we play a Warden, turn to Scoundrel, make a treasure, we can immediately activate the Warden. Now I could also be convinced to play Bunny Corn on two. Opponent blue white, and they must not have a ton of lines in hand. Okay, demolition's interesting. So let's see. Might still be Bunny Corn on two, and then next turn could go Scoundrel, make a treasure, and then demolition the treasure right away. Could still set it up here with Frontliner, and then go demolition. But that's maybe a bit weaker in the face of a counter spell. Yeah, let's just set up the bunny corn. And then I don't think I can attack into a potential virtue of loyalty token. Is this a get lost? If they remove the bunny corn, all right, fateful absence still leaves us with an artifact token, which is good with warden and with gleeful demolition. Opponent stuck on two, which makes sense why they played Soaring City on two. Now, could go still with Charming Scoundrel, make a treasure. I guess I want to play Thrain Portal before it enters tapped. That resolves. Make a treasure. Can activate Warden. Don't need a land. Demolition. Blowing up the treasure. And then I can activate a warden once again. 
and a tank for three, another demolition I'll keep. So we can actually play it and recruiter next turn, which is going to hit for a lot of damage. Looks like maybe another removal spell, destroy evil, since we got to four toughness. All right, so punished for activating it twice here. Now our opponent's got three mana. Potentially have to be worried about a uh, Tidebinder countering the Recruiter trigger. Either way, gonna demolition the artifacts. And then cast a Recruiter, giving the team haste, hopefully. Alright, that's a lot of damage incoming. Smite kills Recruiter. And our opponent's at four. And I don't see them getting out of this. And our opponent agrees. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Our hand is not perfect, but I think keepable. Frontliner into Bunnycorn. Now Demolition makes things a lot more exciting. Can't quite convoke Knight Errant on turn 2, since uh, we're going to be short on one creature. We could now go for Bunnycorn, so we don't enable Ledger Shredder. And then next turn, kind of go off and uh, cast multiple spells. Seems reasonable. Bunnycorn's going to be a pretty large threat, so it's nice to resolve it here. And I would rather demolition my blood token as opposed to my frontliner. Storm Chaser Drake, blue green, so maybe some sort of infect deck or pump spell deck. Okay, so stick to the plan. Epicure demolition, hope they don't have spell pierce. Frontliner, and then we can still knight errants. If they have a bounce spell, they can't bounce my blood token. And then if I want the full convoke, I would have to tap Bunnycorn. I think I would rather attack with it. So it's only going to be a convoke for four here. Finding Recruiter and Evangelist. Not bad. Did our opponent have a bounce spell after all? In which case, I would have been better off tapping the bunny corn for Convoke. Opponent's gonna block and maybe use a slip out the back here to phase out and absorb the impact. Fair enough. There's a Rot Priest, so yep, indeed an Infect deck double Rot Priest is very scary. Now if they find the Blue March, they could kill us out of nowhere. Tyvar Stain for protection. And a Research triggers double Rot Priest. Okay, opponent gets to draw a few cards and try and find the Blue March. We just need to get in while we can. And we could do so with Frontliner into Recruiter. Attack all out. Is that lethal? I mean, our opponent's got plenty of blockers, of course. So it's not going to be a lethal yet. Can I give them another turn? Because at least if I go Frontliner Recruiter, we might force them to block with a few of their creatures. And makes it less likely our opponent can combo kill with a Rock Priest. If I go Evangelist first, then next turn we're much more likely to present lethal with our attack. Although I think we'll likely still have enough to cross the finish line. So may as well try and force the issue now. And yeah, there's the Blue March. Which, uh, yeah, that's just game here. 4 times 2 is 8. Poison triggers. And there's nothing we can do about it. On to the next one. 
All right, we're on the draw, and uh, this hand would have been keepable with functional mana, but uh, yeah, what I wouldn't give for a red-white fast land in this deck. This is better. So turn one, we can maybe go for Epicure, turn two, Scoundrel plus Warden, and then activate it. So we may not need the third land after all. Could also play Warden on turn one, then go Scoundrel plus Epicure, and then attack for two. So this maybe results in a little bit more damage, although the opponent has removal. Playing it the other way means we at least get to scry one. Alright, I guess turn one forest. I guess uh, removal is not that much of a concern. So I'll play the warden first. And then hopefully we can find evangelist and or recruiter with a knight errant. Could have also played battlefield forge for turn one warden. Just to potentially set up epicure plus gleeful demolition on turn two. Since now we don't have a double red. But uh, we'll continue with our aforementioned line, I think. Also wouldn't mind discarding a land to draw, but we want to set up Epicure here. And then we can scry towards something useful. Gleeful Demolition is great. So we can play that after maybe activating Warden. Activate Warden again, or, probably better yet, set up the Convoke on Knight Errant. So our opponent to red-green with a turn 3 Hotly, which they can transform next turn. Not too bad. So if we tap Scoundrel, Epicure, Blood Token, I can Demolition, and then still Convoke Knight Errant, but only tapping 4 creatures. So then I can find additional Knight Errants which is probably more important than activating Warden. And then we'll still have mana left to perhaps cast whatever we find, such as another Warden, and then next turn play Evangelist. And then I can activate either the original Warden or the second one. And given the current board, I guess it makes sense to activate the first one. And definitely don't need more lands. Okay, not bad. Just waiting for Recruiter now to maybe follow up our Evangelist. And whichever creatures can't attack can still help out our Warden. Watley transforms, could have gotten an attack in first. So it makes a pair of dinosaurs. And uh, yeah, Evangelist seems like the play. And then we can start growing Warden some more. Could also start growing the second one now, although this one's not going to be able to attack right away. Still means we can give it flying for next turn, which could be the move. Although if we get in for, let's say, uh, 6 damage here, points at 10, then if Evangelist survives we certainly have lethal and we might have lethal regardless. Bunnycorn seems great, especially against red-green. Yeah, Warden putting in work. Get in for six. Opponent does get to make a bunch of mana here. Maybe even cast a Gishoth. That's probably the worst case scenario. And given that they're playing Glimpse, they might have a more rampy dinosaur deck with Gishoth. It's going to be a Trumpeting Carnosaur instead, hitting a Frill back. That's okay. Their opponent's got four blockers, which means they should be pretty dead if we go all out. Can first play Bunny Corn and Reinforcements, maybe activate Warden once more. They will gain four. And 
and then don't think there's any point in growing the smaller warden. Sure, we'll keep a reinforcements and attack all out. And I'd be shocked if our opponent survives here. All right. Sweet, on to the next one. All right, we're on the play with a reasonable hand. It's definitely far from perfect, but uh, can go Epicure into Scoundrel. Scoundrel might discard and draw, actually, and dig towards more payoff cards, or a Gleeful Demolition would go a long way. Always on the lookout for Knight Errants. Now we could Reinforcements instead, and then next turn Evangelist, turn after Scoundrel. Sure, since my 3-drop is pretty good here, we don't need to actively look for an improved play for next turn. So I can see the advantage of uh, Reinforcements getting in for a bit more damage. Could have also gone Scoundrel with a Wicked Roll, but I'm still planning to discard and draw. Opponent on some sort of Sultai deck. Could be a Squirming Emergence deck, which I've uh, been enjoying recently. Alright, Recruiter's not bad, but first I think Evangelist makes sense. So we'll get an attack in. And hope this resolves. At least if they remove it, we'll be left with two 1-1 one -one bat tokens. And that works. And against Sultai, there's not too many sweepers we're terrified of. Seed of Hope, so more of a self-mill deck here. Blanchwood Prowler. So it could be an Urborg Holurgoyf type of situation. Which shouldn't have access to too much removal. And yep, Speak of the Devil. Still only a 1-2, so we can actually attack into it pretty easily. And that's enough for a concession. This turn I would have gone Scoundrel, make a treasure, and then we can still play Recruiter. And we can quickly do the math, but it's going to be more damage than we'd expect, since every creature gets pumped for two, essentially. So don't think it's quite lethal, but we're getting very close on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and uh, Knight Errant might be one of our best cards, but three of them without any tokens is still not keepable. Okay, here we are missing an artifact to go with a Gleeful Demolition. Probably still keeping on six. And one Demolition can go. So, opponent on a Dinos and we found the Epicure, so now we can actually set up a turn two Demolition. So I can't play Portal on white to play Warden, can play Forge of course. And then, uh, for now, play Warden. And then next turn, Epicure plus Demolition. And then we can immediately activate the Warden as well. Turn 2 Stompers, pretty nice. Also a Dinosaur. So that's an interesting way of ramping. So we could see a turn 3, 5 mana Dinosaur already. Such as a Dracosaur. Have to play Thrain Portal. And then we can do something fun here with uh, Warden, where we play Epicure. And then tap three artifacts or creatures. And then Demolition to do it again. Epicure would have been good if we still had an extra Demolition, but since we don't, I don't think it's necessary. We'll be looking to curve Evangelist into Recruiter most likely. Frontliner also doesn't contribute much. I'll take a Knight Errant now, since we can easily convoke it. Hulking Raptor. Okay. And an attack for one. And then I think still go for Evangelist. Recruiter is also reasonable. Opponent can block one of my tokens and still take... 
Let's see, 6 plus 4 is 10. I think setting it up with Evangelist makes more sense. And then we can activate Warden a bunch. Night Errant, yeah, that's good to keep. Although next turn I'm most likely just setting up Recruiter. So, I'll keep it, but we may not need it after all. Hit for five. And then Warden's kind of the biggest distraction at the moment, but Evangelist could also contribute to a lot of damage. Skullspore Nexus can double a creature's power. And our opponent's just dumping out a few creatures. The fact that they're producing a lot of blockers is actually relevant since our creatures are about to get pumped up. Although we could also take it slow and just uh, develop our Knight Errant now. If I do go for Recruiter, opponent's got four blockers. So we wouldn't actually be going through with a whole lot. Just double checking. So Warden, Bat, go unblocked. They both get pumped by two actually, so no, we actually have more than enough. Sign call out. There was maybe also a different line where instead of attacking all out, we just pump our Warden some more and only attack with our Flyers and Evangelist. And yeah, her opponent sees that they're dead. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand is missing an artifact for demolition. Otherwise, it would have been very strong. Can I keep as is? So we've got Warden, then a whole lot of nothing. And then at 3 mana, we've got some decent follow-up. So we've got about 10 outs between our Scoundrel our uh, Frontliner and Epicure to enable Demolition. So don't have the best odds. And we also have a tap land. So I think this is a mulligan, sadly. Alright, this is better. We've got Epicure to enable Demolition. Might Bunnycorn on two. Even though I wouldn't be able to play my red spells next turn, could also frontliner and demolition right now, so we don't have to worry about a counter spell. Even though it is better to demolition the blood token, which is a bit harder for them to interact with. And just play the bunny corn, keep it simple. Also good to resolve. And a faithful mending, so it's more of a combo deck here that we're up against. They are playing black as well. Okay, so still no double red, but I could still demolition the frontliner if I'd like. I think it makes sense to just play Epicure and Reinforcements for now. And then next turn we can demolition the blood token while getting in for a healthy 5. Bunnycorn down. And Evangelist, not a bad draw. Seems good to play now over the Demolition. And a Fateful Absence. We'll still leave behind a Bat. And a Knight Errant. Okay, so now the question is, do we play around Sunfall? And we can do so with a relative ease, just by holding back the Knight Errant, perhaps. Attack can sack the uh, clue token, maybe still hit a land drop. And then next turn, Demolition, the Blood token, play Frontliner, can Convoke and find more threats. So let me start by just sacking the clue. Find Evangelist. Yeah, I think we stick to the plan. The only drawback is that I'm not actually presenting lethal next turn if I hit for 5. But I imagine if our opponent has a Sunfall, they're casting it. 
Demolition could technically also destroy the Incubator token. Okay, never mind. Invasion of Tolvada to get back Kaya. So we'll see what they do here. Just plussing to drain for three. Okay, so I don't think I can hold back any longer. Gonna have to demolition plus Knight Errant, or at the very least play Evangelist. Yeah, I think it's Knight Errant time. Even though that does mean fewer creatures going after Kaya. I really want to try and find a recruiter. And I'm going all in here. Alright, found our recruiters. Could also pick up a warden and still play it here. And uh, I'll just go after Kaya with everything we have. If our opponent doesn't have a sweeper, we should get there with a the recruiter next turn. There goes my patience. Opponent minuses on night errands, so that's good. If they had a sweeper, they would have just plussed. Bounce one of my tokens. Pretty sure this is still plenty. And that does it. Awesome. Yeah, dodging sweepers is an important skill when playing a red-white aggro. But uh, I truly believe that if we had a better mana base, let's say we had the red-white fast land, then this could have easily been the top contender in standard. As is, we still have some clunky openings where we have our sundown pass not letting us curve out perfectly. But in terms of pure power level of curving out, this is probably the best deck in standard. Warden feels like it gives your entire team haste in a way, since you can immediately tap things and get plus one counters as cry. Gleeful Demolition feels one of those cards that should be in older formats that feels a bit out of place in standard, as it can lead to those very explosive starts, enabling an early convoke, but just also overwhelming the opponent with tokens that we can now pump with not only Recruiter, but also Evangelist, which has been another awesome addition to this archive type. So yeah, can't say enough good things about the deck. Certainly recommend it if you're looking for a nice aggro deck in standard. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.